Welcome to you all to this MOOC's online video course Theory of Yarn Structure. In the last lecture, we started with module 6, Radial Migration of Fibers in Yarns. We have covered about general fiber path in yarn, how to characterize this. Then we talked about fiber element, then we talked about some angles to define fiber path in yarn. Then we discussed about trailers ideal fiber migration model and at the end we observed that trailers ideal fiber migration model is not able to explain experimental results of radial migration of fibers in yarn. So, we start from there in this lecture. So, the obvious question is that why trailers ideal fiber migration model does not explain the experimental results of migration. We observe totally different trends. So, we wish to critically examine the assumptions of trailers ideal migration model. The if you remember the first assumption was related to definition of radial migration which is no doubt valid. Second assumption of trailers model was packing density constant at all places inside the yarn. This assumption although we know it is not experimentally fully correct, however, this is an idealized situation. So, we can to some extent agree to this. Third assumption was the absolute value of this is same for all fibers present at radius r. This assumption is idealized and is acceptable. The fourth assumption was nu r is constant. Nu r, if you remember, it is the number of fiber segments intersecting a cylinder at radius r per fiber per unit length of yarn. This assumption is probably not correct. Why do we feel so? We feel so because if we imagine the 
inside of a cylindrical yarn then we see that at the core the volume of yarn is very less because radius is very less. So, fiber to fiber contact fiber to fiber contact is very less there. At the same time if we think about the surface of the yarn where packing density is very less if the packing density is very less then the fiber interaction is also very less. Therefore, we feel that this number of fiber segments intersecting a cylinder at any radius r per fiber per unit length of yarn is probably not constant it varies. Here you see a cylindrical yarn near to this region near to the core in this region the volume of the cylinder is very less because it is very close to center of the yarn. So, its radius is very small. So, fiber intersections must be small here. If we think about a cylindrical region near to the surface say this region near to this region as we know packing density of actual yarn is very less at the surface. So, the packing density is less so fiber volume is also very less number of fiber is very less as a result interaction among fibers must be less too. somewhere inside the yarn in between these two cylindrical surfaces packing density is significant. So, number of fiber intersections must be very high somewhere near to this cylindrical region because fiber number of fibers is too high here. So, fiber to fiber interaction fiber to fiber contact packing density all are very high in this region. So, therefore, it is felt that the packing density <coughs> in this area in this region is high fiber to fiber interaction is very high as a result it is thought that this new r number of fiber intersections is not same at all places inside the yarn wherever fiber volume is too high it is very high so assumption 4 is modified So, in this model assumption 4 is modified what is this assumption 4? Assumption 4 is modified in this way number of intersections number of fiber to fiber interactions must be proportional to the fiber volume. in a cylindrical region. So, what is fiber volume? 
what is the volume of the cylinder 2 pi r into dr into zeta this is the volume of the cylinder and what is the viber volume multiplied by packing density because as you know packing density is defined by the ratio of fiber volume to yarn volume when the yarn volume is 2 pi r dr times delta zeta multiplied by packing density will give you the fiber volume. So, nu r is equal to capital C 2 pi dr delta zeta is proportional to 2 pi dr delta zeta into r into mu. If you look carefully this quantity within the parenthesis is a constant this is same for all ready. So, we can write nu r is a constant into r into mu where c is a proportionality constant. proportionality constant. <coughs> so, this way we modify the fourth assumption of Taylor's model. So, we are now discussing a new theory which is known as model of equidistant radial migration of fibers in yarns. So, in this model assumption 4 is modified in this manner. Now, so it is evident that the model path of fibers if we imagine if we imagine then in this model model of equidistant fiber migration model it starts somewhere here then it has very less intersections near to the surface maximum intersection fiber to fiber fiber intersections happening uh, over here at the core also it is very less. However, if you remember Taylor's model this fiber intersections was same was considered to be same at all places. So, in Taylor's model the path was assumed to be like this. regular fiber path. But in this model fiber path is random. So, this is the basic difference between Taylor's model and model of equidistant radial migration. <coughs> now, <coughs> now, 
if we look at what will be the value of period of migration it is definitely varying in this model this period of migration can be written by two because you remember nu r was defined by this so when small n is equal to 1 how many fibers or fiber segments will intersect the axis in order to get a period p 2. So, is nu r by 2 right. So, we can write period is here now varying. Now, what was nu r? Nu r was capital C r into mu, right. We consider this 2 by capital C is a constant because capital C is a constant, we can write it as a small c. So, we write small c into r into mu, right. So, nu r is equal to 2 by p and p is equal to small c by r into mu. So, 2 r mu by small c. So, this is the expression for nu r. You see here r if r varies nu r will vary because c is a constant and mu is also assumed to be constant in this model too. So, this is how this model is different from Taylor's model. Now, we will go back to the fundamental equation of radial fiber migration, we will substitute nu r there and we would like to see what is the expression comes out and what does that expression tells to us. So, if you remember the fundamental equation of radial fiber migration mu nu r minus 1. This was the fundamental equation of radial fiber migration. Now, we substitute nu r this and tangent beta 2 pi r z. We will make these two substitutions into this expression and we would like to see what it comes out. So, tan square beta let us write as tan square beta here we will substitute in the denominator mu nu r 2 r mu by small c into n s z square tangent beta 2 pi r z square minus 1. So, what it becomes is 1 plus tan square beta mu into 2 pi r z into c 2 r mu n s z square minus 1. Right. So, we would like to see what it comes out 
numerator we do not change, denominator you would like to see what is coming out. These two and these two cancel out, this mu, this mu cancel out, this z, this z cancel out, this r, this r cancel out. So, we are left with a simple form pi into c n into s square minus 1. Pi is a constant, small c is a constant, n number of fibers in the cross section of yarn is constant, small s is fiber cross sectional area that is also constant. So, pi c divided by n s is a constant. Let us assume this is equal to capital Q which is a constant, then we write as Q square minus 1. This is a very important expression. This expression is known as fundamental equation of equidistant migration. So, the last expression is known as fundamental equation of equidistant migration. If we like to know how to find out Q, then we can do one thing. So, Q is equal to pi times small c by n into s. Now, what is n s? Number of fibers in the cross section of yarn multiplied by cross section area of one fiber. So, this is the cross sectional area of all fibers, substance cross sectional area s naught. What is s naught? S naught is capital T naught by rho is the starting fineness of parallel fiber bundle which is equal to fineness of the yarn into 1 minus retraction. We discuss this in helical model of fibers in yarn. Now, we know yarn diameter square takes this form. So, T by rho is equal to pi mu capital D square by 4. If we substitute this here then pi mu D square by 4 into rho 1 minus retraction right. Then if we come back here in Q, so pi times small c pi mu d square by 4 into rho 1 minus retraction. What we see that this pi and pi will cancel out. So, <coughs> sorry this row will not be here. So, we can it write it further small c by d by 2 square mu into 1 minus retraction. So, this is about capital Q. 
Okay. Now we would like to derive the expression for phi bar path at different radius. So, zeta versus small r. So, we go back to our fundamental equation of radial migration tan square alpha is equal to tan square beta plus 1 divided by q square minus 1. So, tan alpha will be equal to plus minus 1 plus tan square beta q square minus 1. So, what is tangent of alpha dr by digita from definition dr by digita plus minus root over 1 plus tangent of beta is equal to 2 pi r times z 2 pi r times z square divided by q square minus 1 right. So, we can write further dr by root over 1 plus 2 pi r z square is equal to plus minus d times zeta root over q square minus 1 right. So, <coughs> if we integrate this plus minus this. So, we need to do this integration. Let us think about this part. So, integration dr by root over 1 plus 2 pi r into z square. How to integrate this? Let us assume two pi r into z is equal to x. So, integration by substitution. So, two pi z dr is equal to dx. So, integration dr is dx by 2 pi z and this is your x. No, x square plus 1. So, 1 by 2 pi z is a constant, it can come out, come out of the integral. This we write in a little different manner. Let us multiply by this in the numerator, we must do the same in the denominator also. right. Now, we can further divide this by this quantity. So, what we will get is 1 plus by x 
into d x. Now, we will consider this quantity as y. So, we rewrite the last step for our convenience. This is equal to 1 by 2 pi z integration 1 plus divided by 1 plus x squared plus x into dx. Assume root over 1 plus x squared plus x is equal to y. So, this is 2 x by this plus 1 d x is equal to d y. So, 1 plus x by root over 1 plus x square into d x is equal to d y. So, then we can write 1 by 2 pi z this is your d y and this is your y. So, integration d y by y is logarithmic y. 2 pi z ln into y. What is your y? y is root over 1 plus x square minus x. What is your x? x was 2 pi r z 1 plus 2 pi r z squared minus 2 pi r z right. So, 1 by 2 pi z logarithmic of root over 1 plus 2 pi r z square plus sorry this must be plus plus 2 pi r z. So, this was one integration. What was the second one? Second one was simple one d zeta by this. Now, here this is constant d zeta. So, root over q square minus 1 into zeta. Okay. So, what was our original form of integration? So, our original form of integration was this dr by root over 1 plus 2 pi r z square is equal to plus minus integration d zeta this. So, this integration we found as one by two pi z l n root over one plus two pi r z square plus two pi r z is equal to plus minus zeta by this plus say k, k is integral constant.
right. So, we can rewrite it further 1 plus 2 pi r z square plus this is equal to plus minus 2 pi z root over minus 1 into zeta plus k. So, this expression will give you the fiber path inside the urn. Now, if you put different values of r, then you will realize that this gives you a almost straight line. So, we can say that the infinitesimally small curve of a fiber follows almost a linear path inside the urn. So, imaginatively inside the urn it follows this kind of straight line. So, in the last expression if you put different values of r then you can find out different values of zeta. If you plot them r versus zeta you will obtain a curve which will be resembling very similar to this straight line. So, this infers that the path of infinitesimally small fiber segments inside a yarn is very near to a straight line. So, 1 plus 2 pi r z square plus 2 pi r z is equal to 2 pi z root over theta plus k. So, if you take different values of small r you will get different values of zeta. If you plot, you will get such behavior. Now, we set this model as model of equidistant migration of fibers in yarn. Why we said so? So, why this model is called as equidistant migration of fibers in yarn? So, we would like to talk about it now. So, <coughs> name of the model we will discuss now. If you remember one point of time we derived this expression In fact, this expression we derived at the beginning of this module dr by dl is equal to tan alpha divided by square root of tan square alpha plus tan square beta plus 1. Now, what this model gives? This model gives us tan square alpha is equal to tan square beta plus 1 divided by q square minus 1 right. So, tan square beta plus 1 can be substituted as 
q square minus 1 tan square alpha. So, what we will get dr by dl is equal to tan alpha square root of tan square alpha plus q square minus 1 tan square alpha. So, in the denominator tan square alpha if we take then what do we see 1 plus q square minus 1. So, what we will get? We will get tan alpha by q tan alpha right. So, dr by d l is equal to plus minus 1 by q. Right. What does that mean? This means d l is plus minus q times d r. Look at this expression d l is plus minus q times d r. d l is the change in length of fiber segment, d r change in radius, q is a constant. So, the fiber length increases equidistantly with steps of radius. The fiber length increases equidistantly with the steps of radius that is why this model is called as equidistant migration model. That is why this model is called as equidistant migration. Now, we will consider some approximations. If you remember in trailers model also we considered two approximations. One was slow migration, period of migration was very high, so slow migration, so the factor k capital K there was very high. Second assumption was tan square beta is, is much, much less than 1. In this case we will consider the same that is tan square beta is much much less than 1 is valid for all ready r. So, what will become tan square alpha tan square beta plus 1 q square minus 1 right. Now, if tan square beta is very very small then 1 plus a very very small quantity is approximately 1. So, we can write it as 1 by q square minus 1. So, tangent of alpha will be plus minus 1 by root over q square minus 1. What is tangent of alpha? dr by d zeta 1 by root over q square minus 1. So, 
d root over u square minus 1 d r will be equal to d zeta. So, if we integrate this expression what we will get? We will get we will write here plus minus minus 1 into r is equal to zeta minus a small k small k is integral constant. Right. So, zeta is equal to plus minus root over q square minus into r plus k. Look at this expression. This is an equation of a cone. That means, the fiber path approximately follows conical inside yarn. So, how does it look like imaginatively? This is how the fiber path will look like. So, it starts from somewhere here, it touches the surface. So, this is how it touches then again it goes inside, again it comes out touches the surface, goes inside. So, this path resembles this path resembles path of a cone. So, in equidistant radial migration if we consider the approximation then fiber path follows cone. Otherwise, we can say the fiber path inside a yarn approximately follows a cone. So, this is all about equidistant migration of fibers in yarn. Now, the very important question rises whether this model is able to explain the experimental results correctly. So, this is how is the comparison between theory and experimental results. comparison theory versus experiment. What we see that in this graph along the x axis tangent beta 2 pi r times z is plotted along the y axis absolute value of tangent alpha multiplied by tangent beta. So, this region is same in the comparison of Taylor's model. So, this is basically the experimental region all experimental data fall in this region. Right. So, this is your experimental region. Now, two types of curves are there one is original, second we see approximation. The original we have derived into tangent beta is equal to 
uh, root over 1 plus tan square beta root over q square minus 1 into tangent beta. So, this was original fundamental equation. So, these continuous thick lines black color for different values of q we obtain. For example, q is equal to 7 here. So, this line. So, this line is obtained from this expression. Right. And also you see one approximation line, approximation line is dotted line is this line for q is equal to 7. How we obtain this approximation line? Approximation line we obtain by tangent alpha into tangent beta is equal to tangent beta root over q square minus 1. So, if you substitute q is equal to 7 for different values of tangent beta you will obtain this dotted curve. For q is equal to 10 you will obtain this dotted curve. For q is equal to 3 you obtain this dotted curve 13. For q is equal to 13 you obtain this dotted curve. For q is equal to 16 you obtain the last one dotted curve. So, what is interesting to see here that the equidistant migration model shows a very good correspondence between theory and experiment. That means, by changing one assumption in Taylor's model that was assumption 4 nu r is proportional to radius r. We can see that the, the derived model explains the experimental results satisfactorily. So, this was about the model of equidistant migration of radial uh, fibers in yarn. Now, we will have one numerical exercise now. So, the numerical problem is set in this manner. A carded ring spun yarn of 36.8 text count and 497 meter inverse twist was prepared from viscose fibers of 38 millimeter length and 3.5 decitex fineness. This yarn was characterized for the radial fiber migration in, in this yarn by tracer fiber technique and we obtained the following results. For different value of smaller by half of yarn diameter 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 we measured different values of period of migration in millimeter. 12, 6, 4, 3, 2.4. The values of packing density and coefficient k n were found to be 0 0.536 and 0 0.93 respectively. Find out the fundamental equation of equidistant radial migration of fibers in this yarn. So, this is how is this problem. So, let us solve this problem. What is given is mu 0 0.536 and coefficient k n is given 0 0.93. It was a also given yarn count capital T thirty six point eight ticks twist is given four ninety seven turns per meter. So, we have to first find out yarn diameter 
as we know from yarn diameter module 2 So, if we substitute the values here 4 into 36.8, 3.14536 viscose fiber 1510 kg per meter cube is the density, right. So, this value we will obtain. 2415 in millimeter. Let us consider it as 1500. Viscose fiber density 1.5 gram per cc. Then what is given here? In the table, this value is given. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, P is given 12, 6, 4, 3, 2.4. From there, we can find out R because we know now D. So, R is equal to So, R by D by 2 is equal to say 0 0.1. So, R is equal to 0 0.1 into D by 2, D is given here. So, if we do this, then we will find out 0 0.0121, 0 0.0242, 0 0.0363, 0 0.0402, 0 0.6, 0 0.0605. Roughly, we will find these values. Now, what was small c? R times p times mu in equidistant radial migration. We know R, we know P, we know mu. So, if we multiply these 3, then we will get this value 0 0.0778. You will see that this value will be same in all other cases. Right. So, we obtain now this table, we have to now find out fundamental equation of equidistant migration. As we know, the fundamental equation is tan square beta plus 1 into q square minus 1, where q is pi times c by n into s the value of c we obtained as 0 0.0778. We have to obtain values of small n number of fibers in yarn cross section and small s that is fiber cross section area. How to find out small n? Small n is equal to coefficient k n into yarn fineness by fiber fineness. The value of coefficient k n is given here 0 0.93 into 36.8 takes divided by 0 0.35 takes. So, this value will be coming to 98. So, this is your 98 into small s. How to find out small s cross sectional area? We know this relation from module 1. So, this was 0 
divided by 1500. So, this value will be equal to this. So, if we substitute 2.33 into 10 to the power minus 4, this will be coming is equal to 10.70. So, the fundamental equation becomes 10 square plus beta plus 1 10.7 square minus 1. So, this is the fundamental equation of radial fiber migration in this yarn. So, for different value of beta we can obtain different value of tan alpha from this example also. So, this completes the numerical problem in this module. Thank you, thank you very much for your attention.